Hey, welcome back. This is Florian from LifeScienceMentor.com and today, as part of the 180 day idea machine challenge, we are talking about aromatherapy. Aromatherapy? Whoa, come on. That's some bullshit. <sighs> really? Aromatherapy? Well, I was rather skeptical about, uh, about this therapy because I at least up to now, regarded as, as uh, pseudoscience and pretty not really a proven therapy, right? However, how can I ever say that I know about the topic if I'm not thinking about arguments that are for it or against it, right? So basically, even though I, I, I don't really like uh, aromatherapy, I never really thought that would be a viable therapy, I still do want to find 10 arguments for it and 10 arguments against it. And that's a good practice to learn uh, debating because you have to be able to open your mind to have an um, argument that is for something and to use the same argument against something. So you see that every, every topic that you bring up, every argument, has basically two sides to it. And I'm trying to tease that out with the example of aromatherapy. Okay, so, and, and I have to say that aromatherapy was something, maybe not as therapy, but I did have, um, I did have a aroma lamp um, at my, uh, in my apartment um, when I was in high school. And um, I had that aroma lamp to impress girls. Uh, didn't really work, but at least I had a, nicely smelling um, room and uh, it was a it was a nice experience overall so what you basically do is for all of you who don't know what aromatherapy is basically you have um, you have a little lamp um, that has a, a tray with water on top and then you take essential oils basically distilled the distilled substances from um, from like eucalyptus lavender or other herbs um, all distilled into an into an oil so it's very concentrated smell and you put like two three drops into your little water bath and then you heat it up with a candle and um, the scent spreads throughout your apartment throughout your room and so some people claim it helps them and there are there are some studies that suggest that it may actually be helpful Another, um, so it, it cures, um, some people claim it cures pain, back pain, or it cures sleeplessness. It makes you feel overall better, and that's what makes me a bit skeptic, because maybe you just feel overall better, and then sort of like your diseases, or you, when you kind of have a cold or something, that goes away also, just because in general your constitution becomes better. Then on the other hand, maybe that's a good argument in favor of aromatherapy, right? So, um, just call me a little bit skeptical about all these alternative medicines because they have not been proven really to, to work in, med in medical trials. But who's to say there may not be something to it, right? Another, another, um, another option where we actually use aromatherapy in a way, right? You can, um, you can use uh, ointments that you topically apply to your skin and then the uh, then it, these um, ointments give up give up um, you know they give up an aroma and you breathe that in and you know then you then you um, then you can become healthy supposedly if you if you ever took a project that's called Medinite from I think from a company called Vic um, you put that on your chest when you have a cold and then it's very strong eucalyptus. Um, aroma, and you breathe that in while you sleep, and it frees your it frees your it frees your breath, makes you breathe easier, and then treats basically treats your cold that way, right? So, yeah, I mean, I was skeptical about aromatherapy, but maybe there's something to it. Um, the medical evidence seems to be a little bit on the thin side. Nevertheless, I do want to I do want to find ten arguments for it and ten arguments against it, and then maybe. Um, we can do a, like a, do a bit 
better judgment about it. And maybe in some cases it's even a good idea to do that, right? A good idea to use aromatherapy. Okay, argument one. It is non-invasive and mild. So that would be the pro argument. Right? We don't need to we don't need to use like uh, strong pills or take a take a lotion um, or or even an injection, right? It's non-invasive. Uh, there's just some some aroma in the air and slowly gets into our noses and gets into our body. And it's it's non-invasive. And um, the argument against that is that it's less controllable when it's in the air, right? It doesn't mean that that any substance that is inefficient just because it's in the air, right? Um, in fact, if you just swallow the lotion or have an injection, you can precisely control the amount of substance you take. If it's just diffusely in the air, you cannot control it unless you leave the room, right? So um, that would be something that, that actually argues against using aromatherapy because you don't know what it really is, you can't control it. You can't control the dosage. Um, argument two, in favor of aromatherapy, we can easily increase or decrease the dose without immediate harm, right? Sure. You can add another drop to your, to your, um, to your vaporizer and then you increase the concentration in the air. Or you take, next time you take a drop away and um, that is a little, that, that is, um, that's actually an easier way to handle it than, um, than with using medication, right? Um, the argument against that is that we can still apply too much, right? Um, Paracelsus said something um, to the effect of, you know, no substance is without any poison. It's all a question of the dosage. You can die from drinking two liters of distilled water or something like that, right? You can die from eating too much salt, even though salt and water itself are not harmful. So um, it's all the dosage and um, that means that if you choose the dosage too high with your, with your aromatherapy oil, you may still do harm, right? Um, it's not that that these aromatherapy oils are just less are just less harmful in a way, right? You, you you can just you can still apply too much. It's not like uh, you can more easily modulate the concentration. It's somehow more subtle effect. No, if there's harmful substances, then it doesn't matter if you swallow them or have them in the air. Right? Argument number three, pro aromatherapy, it is geared towards long term effects. So you could say that the advantage in number two, um, argument number two, that you can easily decrease or increase the dose, um, comes into play here as well, right? It's long-term effects. So you, you, you uh, maybe maybe you don't have an immediate effect from aromatherapy, but over time, you may actually have a benefit from it, um, because you know because it slowly accumulates the effects, and then one point your body gets so much of these effects that it shows a reaction. Or you chronically battle some kind of disease with these aroma oils. And that way, if you have, like, if you have uh, uh, the scented atmosphere around you all the time, then it truly is a long-term effect. And, you know, uh, you're always exposed to, that long, to, to the smell and then it can really have a very efficient long-term effect on you. But the argument against that is that long-term effects can be dangerous as well, right? So if you if you think about asbestos, mercury, lead, those are all substances people get poisoning from by, by being exposed over a longer time. And the treacherous nature of these substances is if you don't realize there's, a, there's an effect at once, right? These effects can accumulate, and then instead of a beneficial effect in the end, the effect in the end can actually be quite harmful. So... You know the argument that you can that that um, aromatherapy would have long-lasting benefits can also be used in a completely different way, right? Completely opposite way. It can have long-lasting damage that you don't realize first, because once again we don't really know what is in these oils. So um, these substances are 
possibly harmless, but who knows, right? Um, and also, if you think about ointments that people apply on their skin, they can also have irritating effects or cause allergies. Number four, homeopathy is unproven. On a, a homeopathy has shown that small doses are efficient in curing diseases. I, I jumped ahead with the anti-argument, but you know the argument is here since homeopathy has shown that we really we really care about very very um, very very diluted stuff, very small doses. Those are efficient. Um, we can also say, well, very small doses um, with our ar aroma oils, they are also beneficial. But then, against this pro-argument, I would say homeopathy is unproven in pseudoscience. There's literally no, no study that can really convincingly show with a double-blind study that the effect that you get from homeopathy is anything different than a placebo effect. Because the more you dilute a substance, the more the, the less you'll have it in there. You know, in the end, if you dilute a substance 23 times or to the 10, uh, 10 times to the 23rd power that they sometimes do in homeopathy, that's basically there's basically there's no substance left in your or in your solution, right? So that's bogus. The argument we use less and then we get a better effect. You could think that aromatherapy would let you use less, but it's if that's your argument, it's bogus. Number five. A pro-argument would be it calms the mind and has beneficial spiritual side effects. Think about it. You, you put like three drops of the oil into your vaporizer, then you light a candle, um, and then you slowly the oil becomes, it's only the oil vaporizes and slowly the aroma spreads through the whole room. And that has, that has some kind of spiritual effect. In fact, um, I can imagine that when you do that every day, like regularly always start your aromatherapy, that has a calming and soothing effect, right? You light a candle every day and that's kind of a ritual. That's kind of a ritual that, that gets you grounded and that, um, that basically puts some regular spiritual routine in your life. And that can be very beneficial, right? Spiritual health is something that's very important. I try to reach my spiritual health by um, talking about my uh, things that I'm grateful for every morning. But whatever it is, spiritual, daily spiritual exercise, I think is important. Some people do meditation and lighting a candle there certainly would be a spiritual practice. However, here's the rub. Redefining treatments as an extension of spirituality can be fatal. Two things happen. You light a candle and first of all, you think, well, I'm doing something against it. I'm doing something. Maybe maybe you have a maybe you have um maybe you have a um uh, maybe you have a more more dangerous disease. And that disease needs real medical treatment. Like, for example, if you have, God forbid, cancer, right? You need to have chemotherapy. If some people are as crazy as using alternative methods against cancer, then they may use aromatherapy. And then they say, they tell themselves, well, we light this candle every day. And, and so we're doing something. So your mind thinks you're taking action. When in, in, in actuality, you don't. So in, this, in, the, in the second way, of course, if aromatherapy is not an efficient treatment for cancer or or any other um, uh, potentially fatal diseases, then you just delay the most efficient treatment by doing the aromatherapy first, right? So having spiritual practice is great, but um, using aromatherapy as part of your spiritual practice has some potentially very dangerous pitfalls. Argument number six, pro-aromatherapy, would be it has already helped a lot of people. Yeah, and there's anecdotal evidence that it has helped people. However, it's just if, if your claim to efficiency um, of your therapy is a handful of anecdotal evidence, well then, unless you really know the people and trust the people that, that do it and really know in which circumstances they took the, the, they did the aromatherapy, 
then it stays uh, uh, anecdotal evidence and you have no way figuring out whether this is really something that is um, that is applicable to a larger group of people, right? So there's no clear scientific study. Some studies show with a very specific subgroup of people. Um, for example, there was a study that showed that when, um, when people had were in intensive care and intensive care they they had lots of problems to sleep because it's so active and so busy in their lights all the time then if you use aromatherapy for those people they can sleep more easily you know but these situations are very specific circumstances where aromatherapy sure can help i believe that but it may also be that that it has helped because of many different reasons right so that's great. Some people can cure back pain and sleeplessness and can get, get a boost in their mood. But um, I would be careful to extrapolate um, any applicability for yourself from these anecdotal evidence since we don't know what the background for these, uh, for these effects really was. Number seven. Aromatherapy is relatively inexpensive. So the oils are cheap and you only use a few drops for each application. All right. Um, but you could say against that that you can still lose a lot of money, right? You, you need to buy the machines, the vaporizers. Um, if you try to treat a disease with it, then your health insurance will likely not pay for it. And then if you can't trust your medication, there may be additional costs if you have to use real medication, right? So, actual medication. So, it's not always... and everything. Things are not always that cheap as they look on the surface. Number eight, no research animals are harmed when developing this medicine. And since these oils are all plant-based, there is no, no animals were killed for these oils, which may be a good thing. And also, since they're distilled from herbs and grasses and the knowledge is handed down sort of from generation to generation by word of mouth, um, those medicine, those aromatherapy oils are not tested on animals. And some people may regard that as a good thing. However, if we don't do animal testing, we never know if, uh, how, an, how a drug really works. You know, you may feel completely fine, yet some of your organs, like for example the liver, may be damaged. But you don't realize that because you just feel fine and your liver doesn't have any further nerves that would signal you that something is wrong. And you don't realize that, what risks these, these uh, medications have. So, because you don't have any animal testing to, to, you know, to figure out what it does in the body on a physiological, anatomical level. So, actually, I think the lack of, uh, of um, research animal testing is actually something that, that speaks against aromatherapy. At least use it if you want to use it against the disease. Number nine. Argument number nine, it is not, aromatherapy is not big pharma. All right, no evil corporations are involved in producing the oils. You think? It's still big esoterica, right? So if you think, if you think that's, that the sellers of aromatherapy oils don't want to make money, you are, you're, yeah, that's a delusion, basically. Everyone wants to make money. And those guys that sell aromatherapy, since there's no real uh, oversight, they can, you know, there's no real FDA oversight, which sometimes may be a good thing, but um, essentially what happens here is that those sellers can just give get any price they want. They can make any promise they want. They, there's no scientific study to prove them wrong, so they can ask for any money they want and be sure that they price it in a way that's beneficial to them. Right, and you can always sell it as the miracle cure, alternative medicine, the wisdom of the shamans, and something like that. And then people will buy it, and people will shell out a lot of money for it. So, it's very much of a. It's, it's a I see it more as a cash machine than big pharma would even be. And then argument number ten, it smells good. Well, it's aromatherapy, right? So it has a pleasant aroma. But against that, you know, good smell can conceal a lack of efficiency, right? The oils smell very agreeable, and that's the only argument to buy it, right? It's an emotional argument. I mean, if you look at the web pages, 
that sell aromatherapy. Um, they are very nicely done, most of them, beautiful colors. Um, they evoke a certain, a certain blissful emotional state. And then people buy it because they, they, they feel they, they, there's a transfer of emotions from these web pages with these nice colors. Maybe there's a soothing, an expert that talks in soothing voice to the customers. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a, a Chinese shaman healer or Indian shamanic healer or something like that. And then people believe that this will actually help them and they buy it, right? So, uh, with no regard as to how it works. People just trust it works. But as I said before, there's no study. So you have a good smell and good design and that will completely conceal the lack of efficiency. So that would be the argument against it. Taken together, I have 10, uh, I've listed 10 pro and contra arguments for, for aromatherapy, which was a bit surprising to me because I, I never thought aromatherapy would be something worth discussing because I always thought it's pseudoscientific bullshit. However, there are still some points when I thought about it again by doing all these pro and contra arguments, there's some point that make me maybe reconsider my opinion a little bit. So maybe at one point I'll try aromatherapy as a, as a um, prophylactic remedy, right? So maybe if I have like always some scented um, eucalyptus oil at, at home, like burn it every day, there's some healthy substances in the background that can help indeed prevent some of the diseases, right? Um, it's so far that's clear. It's a pretty easy way of um, of using it, right? You just light a candle and then let the oil just slowly evaporize. Um, and yeah, I'm not I'm not opposed to it anymore. But I'm also, I mean, it could help me uh, fall asleep faster, or if I have ever some back pain, it could help me with that. It's worth a try, especially if you maybe have have sleeplessness, back pain, and you don't, any therapies didn't work, then why not try aromatherapy? May I just do the trick, right? Um, and as far, as far as I can see, it's not, it's not like it could be, but in most cases, it probably is not immediately harmful. So just feel free to try it, right? Um, I would not do it when I'm, when I would have cancer or, or serious allergy or asthma or any other potentially life-threatening diseases, I would not use aromatherapy. I would use more aggressive, aggressive medicine there. So if you want to have a acute cure for, for, a very, very, for, a very, for a very present disease, I would not use aromatherapy, not at all. But, you know, just as a way of life, in a way, I could think about that. That would be something it's worth trying, right? The lack of real scientific evidence about the, the abundance of anecdotal evidence may be something that you can reconsider um, and think about if some people were benefiting from it, then you may be as well. Just don't, just don't expect too much of it, right? But um, yeah, that's my conclusion. So thank you for listening. Um, I hope it has helped you. And if you, uh, if you have ever another topic that you can't really decide about, if you want to find some positive and negative um, um, arguments or arguments for or against it. Just feel free to look at the article, this video again, look at the corresponding blog article, get inspired to some of the uh, ways I design my pro and contra arguments and let me know if it has helped you. I'm curious to to know your opinion on uh, aromatherapy. Do you, think, do, you think, do you think it's total bullshit or do you think there's something to it? Do you know people that has that have been helped? Because I would be really interested to know some people directly that had that that were helped by that use aromatherapy and now feel better about some aspect of their life. Um, curious, uh, genuinely curious about that. If you enjoyed the video, like it. That way we can rank it higher in Google. More people will see it. More people will join us. I thank you very much for being here. Um, I wish you a great start in the next week, and. I see you again tomorrow. Bye.